All right, so we made some cool progress with uh, our code. Um, one of the things that we worked on uh, most was uh, this button to switch controls. So we created a, um, a method here um, that all it does is take the current drive speed um, and inverts it, and the turn speed and inverts that too. I'll talk about this uh, second one in a minute. Um, but we can see that drive speed is an instance variable. It's declared up here um, uh, inside this uh, our robot class. We have drive speed and turn speed. And then in the initialization, uh, we can see that the drive speed is linked to the pitch, and the forward and back motion of our joystick. And the turn speed is, sit, uh, is set to the roll, the side to side of our joystick. Um, and in order to, for us to switch what the front and the back is, so that our robot can, can drive either way as the front, we press uh, button number seven, and so uh, we we use this reactor, which um, which just listens for a, a button switch, and so it can asynchronously respond to that button switch, so that there is no lag, and it's an event-driven model where it triggers uh, it triggers this method. Now, one of our we first tried. Uh, to have button 7 trigger the switch control without uh, the parentheses and the lambda and we just had it like that um, and that doesn't work um, it doesn't understand the parameters and so we have to uh, link it with uh, this this is a method of Java 8 um, that I'm not entirely sure about so this is something that um, that Sebastian's been reading up on and so hopefully he can bring us up to speed on some of this relationship. Uh, anyway, um, so we have button 7 now. Uh, you can press it and it switches uh, the drive speed and if you press it again it switches it again bringing it back to what it was. Now the next thing we tried to do is this turn speed 2. Now we wanted so the joystick that we have can twist side to side as well as lean back and forth and side to side. It can, it can also twist. Um, and our driver, Bradley, wanted uh, that twist to also, um, to also uh, manage turn speed. And, and it didn't work. Um, but I, I wonder... Uh, we link turn speed to this, but where, where does turn speed actually, aha, see, this is, um, we pass the drive arcade with drive speed and turn speed. We never pass turn speed to, um, to our tele up. And so, uh, I don't think it, I don't think it reads it. I wonder if we can link the two together, um, similar to how we link the, uh, we compose the uh, two left motors together. I wonder if there's a way where we can combine these two. Uh, but that's, that's why. We link it successfully, but we never pass it to the drive system so that it'll uh, actually be connected to the drive. Um, so that's why that twisting has, uh, wasn't enabled. Now we also had another problem with the camera. So um, if we look here, camera is pretty simple. That all you essentially have to do is we link the camera library and then we just start the automatic capture. And that's pretty much it. Uh, at that point, as long as the camera is defined, um, then it will be detected. We had a problem in that Bradley added the camera back into place directly um, using Eclipse on the, on the laptop um, that we were working on. Um, and then we worked on it on Code Anywhere and pasted over the code 
um, and it, we lost the, uh, the camera bit. So that, that just speaks to some of our workflow on how we're pushing code. Um, we'll eventually need to um, be a little bit more um, organized about how we move forward with this. But uh, in the meanwhile, uh, right now it, the camera gets instantiated here. Um, not instantiated, but launch, uh, started. Uh, and the camera would have to be linked up here somewhere. And that's just, uh, I think, copying this line of code and pasting it there. Um, so once that, I think that's all we really need to do to link up the camera, assuming that uh, the Robo Rio can see it. I think that would ass that would work for both camera feeds, but um, we'll need to uh, see about that. Okay. Anyway, so now hopefully that gets you caught up. We bought we got button seven switching back and forth. Uh, the twisty thing needs to be figured out if uh, if that's going to happen. Um, and so next up, what we have to do is um, uh, look at what we did last year that triggered the autonomous mode. And so we'll have to get autonomous uh, mode up and running. Um, so it was not only triggered by this file, um, but also the time drive command uh, uh, function, I mean uh, file, that is also in this folder. And so um, that needs to get set up. Um, we also will need to set up the buttons um, to manage uh, the, um, the various uh, other motors we're adding in, like the door for the the trap door for the um, the dump and the uh, wench uh, controls. So that will all have to be um, linked up to a button and then uh, and a method. Uh, but we know now how to do that with this. Uh, switch controls, so it shouldn't be too hard. Let me know if you have any questions.